Um, so as, as many of you know, uh, in late November of uh, 2022, um, Florida Decides Healthcare made the decision to push our, our timeline ahead to 26. Uh, and the thought process there was that at the time, uh, and, I, and I really think it, this was the right call, um, there really was not a, a funding apparatus to to get onto the ballot. Uh, as as you all know, with, with what we just saw with the uh, abortion access initiative, uh, it cost them about twenty million dollars uh, to get to get onto the ballot alone. Um, and we were we were estimating that it would it would be probably around fifteen to eighteen, uh, just given the timing there. Um, and with the the stance that a lot of folks had towards ballot initiatives in Florida at the time. Uh, we really couldn't find a a funding pathway that would let us start our petition circulation early enough to get that million required. Um, now I say that knowing that um, that uh, that makes it look like we were super super weak in comparison to to what we saw for for the the abortion initiative. Uh, and, and I've got to say I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Um, I, I remember. Uh, when it started telling Lauren, like, you know, God, I hope you guys do this, but I just don't see a way. And, um, you know, it, it's a combined effort. Uh, folks got it done. Um, but, you know, I, I think when you're looking at Medicaid expansion versus uh, abortion access, that there's a different level of fire uh, and national attention, which unfortunately we didn't have for expansion. Uh, that being said, um, we have two initiatives that have made it onto the ballot. Uh, this cycle, uh, both the the marijuana and uh, abortion access. Marijuana, I think, is 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 its own sort of thing because that's been funded largely by one funding source. Um, but with the abortion initiative making it on and making it on in just about six months' time, uh, we we've been able to show folks that would otherwise have funded the abortion initiative, but for the fact that they uh, felt like the process wasn't viable in Florida, that that this is still a, a, a process that can happen here. Um, you know, a, a lot of a lot of the larger political donors uh, have started to write Florida off just based off of, you know, Ron DeSantis's win and, um, you know, the the back to back cycles for Trump. Um, you know, I, I, some of the polls that we're seeing right now seems to reflect that that might not be the case for long, uh, but a lot of people were drawing that same connection for, towards ballot initiatives. Uh, we all know, uh, the league certainly knows, that uh, Florida has a long history of, of electing conservatives at the top of the ticket, uh, but uh, passing you know, more um, bipartisan or, or even some could say left of center uh, ballot me measures at the same time. Uh, but that really wasn't understood. And I think the abortion initiative has shown folks that that's really possible. And so um, the landscape is dramatically different uh, it, from a funding perspective than where it was before. Um, we also now know that 76% that, uh, of Floridians support this, uh, including 62% of Republicans. Uh, and so since we first started trying to do this via ballot initiative in 2018, uh, the overall bipartisan view of this has shifted dramatically. Um, we've seen uh, in, in 2022, we saw uh, South Dakota, which voted for Donald Trump by a, a margin of 25%, pass a ballot initiative to, to expand Medicaid. We've seen um, uh, North Carolina, their, their fully Republican-controlled legislature, uh, pass it through legislative means. And so uh, the atmosphere has changed. And we've got a team this time that's that's ready to, to um have us ready on the organizational level. Uh, both I'm here, we've got Kofi, uh, and we're, we're, we we now have a communications firm for emails and uh, uh, social media. We're, we're continuing to build that team out. Uh, in previous iterations, uh, a lot of it was organizations putting folks in kind, which is great. We always liked that, uh, but we didn't have a, a team that was focused on it full time. Uh, and we've got that this time around. Uh, and I think that that shows with, with the work that, that Kofi has been doing uh, with uh, now 20 hubs uh, across the state of Florida and that, that number growing uh, as we continue on here. Um, so just, just kind of highlight the differences there uh, right now, 
Uh, our goal is to raise, to have $3 million cash on hand by the start of 2025 so that we can start a paid petition program uh, in the first quarter of the year. Um, I uh, we, Right now we're sitting at about $700,000 in pledges uh, and uh, those should start coming in uh, in the next month or so. Um, and uh, that's that's that segment. And, and I can, Kofi, if you're ready to, to tell folks uh, how they can get involved, um, I, can, uh, I can turn it over to you. Yeah, Jake, thank you for that. Um, let me pull it up here. Jake, while and we're so, waiting, how much do you think that it will take to get this completed? Sure. Yeah. So I I think um, my my goal is to get the the signature portion done at around twelve to thirteen million. Uh, I think the the more um, I don't know if you say conservative or liberal estimate, uh, it's depending on how, how you want to look at it that way. But the the most expensive estimate we're looking at is probably around eighteen million. Okay. Um, we've we've one of the things too, and I, I guess this is actually a really good point about some of the differences is is we've we've been taking some new approaches to petition circulation. Uh, and so typically. Uh, we see, you know, a, a volunteer component where folks are out there collecting and, and turning turning petitions into hubs, uh, and we also see, uh, you know, paid circulators with the clipboards out in front of publics and things like that. Um, but some of you may have gotten these in the mail. We we uh, when the campaign started, we sent out ten thousand petitions directly to to folks' homes who had either signed the petition in the past or. Uh, we had identified as likely to sign. Uh, we got about 5,000 uh, petitions back um, from from doing that. Uh, and we don't pay per petition, uh, but the cost for that uh, equates, when you do the math, to about $5 per petition, uh, whereas you're looking at 20 to 25 uh, when, when you're using a, a regular circulation program. Uh, so we're uh, we, we don't know if we can, you know, how far we can go with that because it hasn't been done, uh, you know, for an entire campaign. Uh, and so we, we're planning as if we, we have to run a, you know, fairly sizable uh, paid circulation program. But uh, we're going to be putting more and more into into that new digital and, and mail program as well. And as we continue to do that, as long as the, the petitions are coming back, uh, that's saving us, uh, you know, about 75 percent uh, mm -hmm. each, you know, for each petition we get. Mm -hmm. Thank you. OK, um, thank you, everybody. I want to appreciate everyone's time. So I'm going to get right into the presentation. Um, uh, so the, this is Jake and myself. Um, this is our email. Jake is the campaign manager. I'm the organizing director. Or anyone wants to take a moment to um, jot down our emails, easy is jake at floridasidehealthcare.org and kofi at floridasidehealthcare.org. Um, if folks are interested in our our, our EC, our, our, our board, basically, um, these are the organizations on our board. They um, root us and help guide us and help drive most of the initial fundraising. Um, Moving on from that, um, our our timeline. Um, so we started, I got hired on um, the fall of last year. Um, we launched in February of this year. Our goal is to largely do a, a very aggressive volunteer uh, campaign to collect petitions through the rest of this year and reach um, hopefully some level of eligibility into early next year. Um, and then, in 2026, February, we're looking to launch the Yes campaign, which will go from uh, February to November of 2026. Um, so yes on um, Medicaid expansion. And then we're confident, like Jake said, based on polling that we'll be successful um, November of 2026, obviously with your support. Um, now, a lot of folks ask how many petitions will we need? That's obviously based on the last presidential election. Uh, we are currently in a presidential year, so we don't know a thousand percent what that'll be. Um, our goal is uh, 1.4 million. 
Yes, we are planning on having a paid petition campaign. Um, the goal with the volunteer campaigns is to show a lot of energy, a lot of momentum. Um, if you'll see here, um, this shows uh, the, the hubs we currently have established all throughout the state, everywhere from Pensacola down to Key West. We have hubs and we're bringing on more hubs every week. Um, if you're curious about the hubs that we have, um, here, I'm going to drop some links in the chat here. Um, it's all links from the presentation I'm going to have, but um, there's a QR code you can scan with your phone if you'd like. That takes you to our website, to the page where you can see the hubs that we currently have established. Like Jake says, over 20 hubs. And like I said, we're bringing on more hubs every day. Um, they're amazing partners um, in the work that we're doing. Um, these are some of the organizations that we have um, that are establishing hubs throughout the state. Um, as you can see, a lot of them are uh, DECs. Obviously, we are nonpartisan. You don't have to say that. But the fact is that a lot of these organizations were um, with the Freedom Initiative as well. And um, they've not skipped a beat in joining with what we're doing to continue the fight um, you know, for a better Florida for everybody. Um, so February 1st, um, talking about momentum, we had a campaign launch. A press conference. We had uh, experts, representatives, um, good folks talking to the media um, about the campaign. Um, so a lot of folks like talk about the scope of the campaign um, when it comes to volunteer petitions, which is what we're starting with. Um, it goes. We started in February first, twenty twenty four. Um, we're trying to collect the petitions um, actively, obviously, and we have certain standards petitions, but um, deadline for volunteer petitions is February 1st, 2026, right? So we don't want you to wait that long, but that is the deadline. We just want to make folks understand that. Uh, so I want to talk to y'all a little bit about um, our hubs. We do have a hub currently in Broward County. Um, you can find that on our website. Um, the Broward DC has been great in helping with that. Um, and there you can go, you can pick up and drop off petitions, but I wanted to let y'all know because obviously we'll need more than one hub typically in a county, especially counties robust as Broward. Um, so we have two types of hubs typically in a county. We have regional hubs and community hubs. Community hubs had two hubs are typically like someone who's like a really good volunteer who says like, I'm going to hang out at a Panera Bread every Saturday from noon until 2 p.m. And folks can drop off, they can pick up petitions, or maybe someone, and maybe they say every Tuesday or every Saturday, maybe someone else is like, well, I want to host a canvas. And my canvas is going to be here a Sunday from 11 until 1. And then folks can, can um, do that. So we'll post that so folks will know, we'll let that know to volunteers in the area. Um, but those are some of like temporary hubs or temporal hubs. The regional hubs, um, those are hubs that are more standard, right? Those are typically, they have, we've had a lot of DCs, we've had some churches, some other offices that have established themselves. Those are more regular hubs. Um, folks can, once again, pick up and drop off petitions. One of the biggest differences is that community hubs deliver typically their petitions to the regional hub. The regional hubs deliver those petitions to the central hub that we have, which is in Tallahassee. Um, it goes a little bit more into that. If you would like to set up a hub, um, you can you can email me, kofi at floridasideshealthcare.org, and I'll have a meeting with whoever is going to be the lead on that, and then we can work out the details and get everything lined up. So it's Kofi at Florida Science Healthcare Network. So how are you going to help build the movement? One of the biggest things we need is grassroots organizations because hubs are um, a great contact, but hubs don't equate volunteers. Volunteers are typically involved with grassroots organizations that are out there. So if you could recommend a grassroots organization, it's one of the links I provided when I in the original um, in the chat, um, then 
and this is a QR code you can scan with your phone. Um, this is a form where you can recommend a local grassroots organization that might not have a website, might not have a Facebook, might not be on a red radar, but they're someone we need to get in contact with because they'll collect petitions for Medicaid expansion. We also need to know about grassroots events because once we have volunteers, we need to make sure to get those volunteers out to events. Obviously, we have coming up a lot of pride events going on across the county, across the state, sorry. We need to know what are those events happening? Maybe there's events that are publicly listed, but there's other events that we might not know about that you know about. And there might be other events, right? Like Saturday morning markets, um, something like that, that we need to know about. And if you let us know about that, we'll put it on our calendar. We'll make sure that volunteers in your region know about those events. So if they want to show up and they want to come to your hub, collect petitions, go to these events, get those, those petitions signed, turn them back into the hub. That's how we're going to make this happen. Um, now, if anybody here would like to um, like fill out a petition themselves, if you go to this QR code and link I drop in the chat, you can go to our website. We have petition uh, links in English, Spanish, and Creole. You can print that off yourself. You fill it out yourself. You now that had an opportunity to sign a petition. And you can mail it to our central hub. Uh, the the um the email. I mean, sorry, the address is in the bottom. The PO box. That is our our central hub. Um, so you can mail a completed petition there. Um, Jake is in Tallahassee, so he'll get all those. <laughs> he oftentimes opens the mailbox and there's a deluge of petitions falling down on him. So feel free to bury uh, Jake in as many petitions as possible. Because more... <laughs> um, and then this June, um, June 25th at 6 p.m., so that's the last Tuesday of the month, at 6 p.m., uh, we're going to have our grassroots coalition call. Um, this is a QR code for it. Um, I will, I might have missed actually the link for that um, in the chat, um, but I'll make sure to send it to the organizer of the call. They can send it out to everybody. But at that call, we'll actually be going over petition collection best practices, as well as giving latest updates with the campaign. Um, so we'd love for you to join that call. Um, there'll be folks who are hub leaders, volunteers, experts, advocates. Everybody's going to be on that call to help learn what's going on with the campaign. We have these calls monthly. Um, once you join a call, you'll be in, in our algorithm. So you'll be invited to further calls. Um, it's over Zoom, so everyone can join, whether on your laptop or phone. Um, please join us for that call. And um, yeah, this is the end of our presentation. Um, are there any questions in the five minutes we have before the clean water? <laughs> yes, I did, Kofi. Um, I was wondering whether you had any specific strategies that you were going to use this time um, that you think would work this time, the third time around. Yeah, so um, look, I've been doing this work since 2012. I don't think there's any magic to it. It's just talking to people. Um, it's organizing, it's building buzz. Um, we're talking about looking at key days, like for instance, July 30th, which is the birthday of Medicaid when it's first signed. Um, we're looking at uplifting that through earned media and raising awareness. Um, and like Jake talked about, raising the dollars that are necessary for a paid petition campaign. Um, I think that's a key component, whether we see uh, rights restoration or minimum wage, which I worked on with Amendment 2 in 2020, or um, with the recent Freedom Initiative, um, that's part of it. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm reaching out to folks. I'm using the snowflake method, so right? So I reach out to a hub, let's say in um, Escambia County, and then I reach out to all the organizations connected to those hubs talk to all the leaders, connect with those leaders, reach out to them, and I get them in. Am I with, are, are we with the volunteer campaign collecting every single petition needed to get on the ballot? No, but we are collecting, uh, we're creating buzz, we're creating energy that will 
be very visible and everyone will see it. And then when it comes to donors, they'll see it and then they'll, you know, the ideas will donate to the campaign and we can keep everything going. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have uh, any questions? Uh, Linda in the chat. Um, so, um, Jake, if, if she asked if folks will be paid a minimum wage. Yes, yeah, so we paid at least they'll be paid a minimum wage. I mean, yeah. So um, the, yeah. <laughs> the, whoever yeah. whoever is um, working for our our, um, our paid program we're, we're likely going to contract out with a vendor for that um but the any vendor that we use there's there's you know basic worker standards will will certainly be there our, our um main funder uh at this point you know we're one of our main funders has been uh florida seiu uh and so we take um you know workers rights extremely seriously when, when whenever we're looking at any contract um, you know, we've, we've, we've even had some contracts already where we've, you know, kicked it back because there's some like, a um, non-compete clause or something for, for workers at the, the other company. And, and we want to make sure that we're, we're holding the right standards. So, um, absolutely. So, so that, I'm not sure you answered the question. So are you paying minimum wage is my question. So, so yes, I, what I, what I can say is at this point, we haven't hired anyone. Uh, I saw outside of Kofi and I, um, uh, and so there's, there's no one on, on payroll. Uh, we won't actually have the payroll ourselves. We'll be contracting with a company, but we, when we're engaging in that contract, we're going to be making sure that the company we're working with is, is paying above minimum wage. Is paying above minimum wage, did you say? Yeah. Thank I mean, you. really, honestly, that's the only way that you, you're you're able to do the, the an effective paid canvas at this point, um, because one of the main barriers that you have is uh, the the constant drop off of of folks that are doing it, uh, and so uh, best way to do that is to is to pay a, a good wage uh, where you're gonna you're gonna maintain the the folks that are on your team and and not have to be spending resources on on just you know continually hiring and training new folks. I, I agree. Thanks for that consideration. Absolutely. There's another question in the chat. How many petitions did you get in the last campaign? So, uh, so it was um, it was oh, sorry, a little ahead. over two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah, and we're at ten thousand now. Um, so we're we're well ahead of that. And so, how many uh, are needed? One million. <laughs> uh, and so the bulk of that the bulk of that will come from uh the sorry if you hear a baby in the background it's my daughter's bedtime and she does not want to go to sleep uh but uh we're we need roughly a million the the number is set based on turnout for the previous presidential election so we don't know the exact number until after uh november uh but we estimate between 150 to 200,000 volunteers volunteer petitions and the remainder would come from the paid program um mm -hmm. So, and from that too, it's, we're, we're in, Kofi could probably go more into this. It's going to scale uh, outside of the election as well. You know, right now, a lot of the folks that would be out collecting signatures are, you know, all going out for, for their election. candidate or, or other that's issue. Right. That's right. That's, that's understandable. There's another question. Are you confident you can raise the 18 to 20 million that you'll need to complete the process? I know, Jake, uh, that you had said yeah. that by the end of April, you'd be able to release uh, the major donors. And I didn't know if you had an update on that. Sure. So, I mean, our our major donors are all listed on the on the Division of Elections website. Uh, we're, we're a political committee. Um, so so to date, our major donors have been SEIU, uh, Planned Parenthood uh, and the Fairness Project, along with uh, Florida Policy Institute. Um, we you know i i i can't really say who's pledged uh because uh, you know until i have money in the bank i really can't right. can't do that um but you know every, now through the or i think starting next week through election day it's going to be weekly reporting uh so as those come in you you can see that and we've we've just ramped up our grassroots uh program as well you're, you if you're on our email list you're going to see you're going to start getting them 
every other day, if not daily. Uh, and so a, a lot of our funders are probably people on this call or, or like people on this call. Uh, obviously that's not going to get us to 18 million. Uh, we're, you know, we're targeting folks that uh, are uh, companies that, that work in healthcare that, that would benefit from this, uh, you know, large ideological donors. A lot of that's going to come after election day uh, just because we're, we're competing right now with, with folks that, um, have a, an easier case making or an easier time making the case for urgency. Um, you know, one of the things that I always have to stress is, uh, even though 2026 is the year, uh, we are very much an active campaign, uh, right now. And, and so we're just as much in need of funding as, as, uh, people that are on the ballot this year. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I think it would be foolish for me to say that I have a hundred percent confidence that I can raise 18 to 20 minutes or we can raise 18 to $20 million. You know, if I, if I told you that, uh, I don't think you should be able to believe me. Uh, but I do think that there is a very real pathway to get there. Uh, you know, I, I think that there, there has never been more reason for folks to look at Florida right now, <coughs> excuse me, and our, our ballot initiative process as a way to get things done. Um, <coughs> sorry. And we, um, you know, we also the, the number of people who need this to happen uh, only grows every day. We're now at 1.4 million people. Uh, just two years ago, that was 800,000. Yeah. Uh, and so um, the the reasons for this keep getting greater. And, um, you know, we, we also at the same time have more and more working in our favor to show folks that this is a way to get it done. Uh, thanks to, to the uh, abortion initiative on the ballot this year. And one final easy question. Stephanie asks, if they've signed the petition in the past two campaigns, do we need to sign a new one? Yes. Yeah, so um, if you have signed it before February 1st of this year, yes, you need to sign a new one. Okay. Thank you. Joan, Victoria has her hand up. Victoria, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I have a question for one of you, and we won't go into it now. Who should I... Um, I'm Victoria Olson. I'm the regional coordinator for uh, the Right to Clean Water, which is Florida. And my question was, since we're out collecting petitions, we also take your petition with us. I would like to know, and we ask for people to sign your petition as well, because we know it's very important. It's also related to health, is same as clean water. Um, who would I be speaking to going forward to ask if, especially for the volunteers, not so much the paid petitioners that I understand, would be a, I could talk to that would be able to give the okay that your people would also ask for signing our petition and could we get them to, I don't expect an answer now, I just want to know who I should be speaking um. to. I'm, we should I'm talk about that. I'll, director. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, go ahead. You know that that definitely would be me. Um, and okay. I, I can I can um, I'll shoot you my contact info. Okay, is that the email that you put in, yes. Jay? Yeah. Florida? I'll shoot you an email, and we'll exchange phone numbers, and we can go forward uh, out of this meeting and see Perfect. what we can collaborate. Awesome. All good. Hey guys, I got another petition on the way. <laughs> I didn't put your name on it, Jake. Though I just, I just listed in Florida decides healthcare. That's answer. perfect. Awesome. I, Thank I you. knew you would love that. <laughs> That's fantastic. Anybody else have any questions? You guys are rock stars. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I have, I have, I have another question. Sorry. Sure, go well, ahead. And I, um. I, I want to know why we're starting this campaign so early. I mean, I realize that uh, it takes time to collect uh, almost a million <laughs> petitions, but in the middle of a um, an election year, uh, the voters are not thinking about 2026, unfortunately. I mean, we are hoping that they'll even show up in 2024. So, so why did we start? Um, why are we so, starting so early? So, Denise, actually, um, a lot of DCs who've been getting a lot of volunteers in the field have felt uh, relief from having our petition as a conversation starter to their work in the field. Um, so we we haven't run into any sort of conflict 
with the elections going on right now, we've actually been working in tandem. Like like you saw from our presentation, many of our partners are DECs from across the state. Um, we found when we went to Leadership Blue, actually a lot of DECs have been starting even without contacting us directly. So yeah, it's been working in tandem. I mean, because a lot of the folks from the DECs uh, share the values of trying to get Medicaid expansion passed, and they felt like our petition is a great way to open conversations, talk about other issues and candidates on the ballot. And if you've got a way to raise $18 million in less time, I'm ready to take notes. Uh, but but uh, that that's the big reality too, is you know we we need to be able to build traction now to to so that we can have the viability and 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 make the case to, to donors. I agree with you guys. I think it's it's a huge number and you can't do it in a vacuum. It's you gotta start somewhere. So I think you're doing the right thing. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you and look forward to getting an update from you in the next few months. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great rest of your night. We'll be in touch. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Stephanie, you're up next. Okay, I didn't know I was up. <laughs> um, for your guess. I, I guess, uh, well, Linda, Linda Thompson Gonzalez and I and Tiffany Grantham are on the call and uh, Victoria Olson as well. And I believe they are going to be our presenters on the right to clean water petition. So uh, I don't know who is prepared to start, but please go ahead. <laughs> Victoria, oh. Victoria is going to start. She's our regional coordinator. So thanks very much. Victoria, take it away. <laughs> do, do you want me to do the bring up the presentation? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Monica. First of all, we really, we like we would like to um first of all, we would like to thank the League of Women Voters. Um that have invited us to speak about the right to clean water. Um, so thank you very much. Yes. It's pretty important. And, you know, it really shouldn't be so hard for Floridians to protect our waters. We shouldn't have to fight against laws and a legislature that favors special interest over the public good. Monica, next. Okay, and here's another example. And as all of you can read the screen, I am going to be talking as well. And we all know, what is the urgency? Well, in 2023, the Florida legislature tried to pass HB 1197 SB 1240, which would prohibit counties and municipalities from adopting any rules, regulations, laws, or policy relating to water quality, pollution or discharge prevention, or removal of wetlands and preempts such regulation to the state, um, which appeals provisions relating to land management. Uh, and so this is, what, this is a bill, luckily, that did not pass. And this is, we know that they're going to try to pass something else again. So just so you know, I mean, everybody knows that we have been collecting uh, petitions, signed petitions for quite a few years. Unfortunately, uh, we did not pass with the Supreme Court and um, they shot us down. We had to rewrite the a petition and now we are on board collecting once again uh, for 2026, just like the Medicaid. Next, Monica. And uh, this is about Pennsylvania and what happened there, which is a, a lot of this history of other states is what promoted us to do this petition. In 2012, Pennsylvania passed Act 13 
and um, that no municipality had the authority to prevent fracking near schools, churches, homes, or anything. And uh, doctors were even restricted not to talk about people that got sick from fracking. This was written by industry lawyers and the legislatures, uh, legislators of Pennsylvania approved it. Also note that the governor of Pennsylvania received 1.7 million in donations to get this passed. By 2013, uh, things have gotten so bad in Pennsylvania um, that two um, that um, they went and try and they oh my god where am I oh, so they wanted to, to overturn this this laws because people were getting so sick people's lands were totally polluted people had to move but in 2013 the Pennsylvania Supreme Court declared those key uh, provisions of Act 13 were unconstitutional. Thank goodness um, that uh, because they had a previous amendment in their constitution uh, from 1971 that stated people have a right to clean air, pure water and uh, preservation of natural historic and aesthetic values of our environment. So this is why amendments do work. And since that was pointed out, of course, that was overruled. And so this is why we know that we can do this. But Florida, unfortunately, does not have any kind of amendment on their constitution at this time. So we're trying to be the first. Change to next slide. Now we have, this is in Montana. We have held versus the state of Montana. It was a lawsuit brought by these young people in the picture because they also have, they were pretty much in 1972, Montana amendment was passed that a citizen has a uh, constitutional right to clean and healthy environment. But over the years, they forgot that that was in their constitution. So Montana had made laws shaped around the financial interest of energy, mostly fossil fuels. So these young people dug into the laws and found out there was an, there was an amendment on the books. So they took them to court and the reason uh, that it passed was because they asserted that most of those laws and questions had violated the amendment passed in 1972. Change. Next slide. So the value of constitution, environmental rights and public trust. So these are examples so far of uh, what we've talked about that uh, that's why we need a constitutional amendment. Next slide. Okay, um, value of constitutional amendment rights and public trust. Um, constitution environmental uh, provisions are the apex of hierarchy of environmental and natural resource laws. And so we're gonna go to the next slide, please. Okay, and obviously the laws that have been set by the federal government, um, the system is not working because our agencies are not enforcing the laws. Um, next slide, please. Um, the con we, oh, that's why we're back again uh, with our constitutional amendment for 2026. And again, just like the Medicare people, Medicaid people, I'm sorry, we have to have 900,000 signatures. And that's why we have to start so early. We're 
a totally a volunteer organization. We wish we could get 5 million or 10 million in order uh, to be able to hire um, people like Tally ED who are paid petitioner organizations. But unfortunately, those donations aren't quite there yet. Um, next up, slide, please. Clean and healthy waters, of course, pr uh, promote uh, public interest. Uh, Florida is a state about water and fishing and boating and swimming and how they could dismiss the reason why we need good water is amazing because our animals, our wildlife is suffering dearly from all the pollution, all the polluted waters, which is about from the last DEP report, it's about 98% of every, all water in the state of Florida is polluted in some way. Next sl slide, please. So clean and healthy water, uh, oh, next slide, please. So the ballot summary is people have asked a lot of questions about the ballot. And I'm, instead of reading it out, I'm going to explain it to you. On our petition, it says that the reason we're doing this, it's not to sue them for a lot of money because people think, okay, somebody must be making a lot of money on this petition because it says we're going to sue the agencies. No, we're not suing them. We're suing them for, for harm of Florida waters. And that has nothing to do with money or lawyers. It has to do with, we have spinning fish in the Keys that are dying and they don't know what it's from. Our wildlife, the panthers, are also coming down with weird stuff. Um, they're dying off too, and they think it's a form of pollution. Our manatees are starving because um, all the seagrass is dead and it's dead due to pollution. Um, we are going to lose what this state was so great for is being an environmental state where people can come and be outside and enjoy our uh, streams and rivers and camping. This is gonna end. They have no idea that how they are just going to, if they don't do something, how it's going to destroy Florida because our the, how we make money here is tourism. If it destroys the tourism, we're finished. Next slide, please. Enforcement. Well, we're, we all know why we're here is because our state executive agencies just refuse um, to enforce the laws that have been put forth to protect us from the pollution and wildlife. Next slide, please. So if state agencies allow harm to Florida waters, they must have a state compelling interest to do so. Something has to be more important than clean and healthy waters, and they will have to prove that if indeed we have to take them to court. Next slide, please. So, so the, uh, even then, agencies must do all they can reasonably do to limit the harm to no more than what is absolutely necessary. Next slide, please. So if our state doesn't meet these common sense measures, we will, if we can get all this, uh, if we get our 900,000 petitions signed, we'll have standing to take them to court. And after weighing the scientific information and evidence that will support, I'm sure that we will win. And winning is not a monetary form. It is compliance of those agencies. 
Next slide, please. Ah, here's our lovely wetlands. Okay, this is part of Lake Okeechobee, which every time they release water, it's a, a nightmare with everybody. Um, let me talk to you about um, in 20, uh, 2023, we, uh, we had Sackett versus um, the EPA. In our lovely Supreme Court weakened our Clean Water Act, which found rulings found smaller bodies of water like seasonal streams or wetlands that do not connect to a larger body of water, lake or river, do not fall under the jurisdiction of the Clean Water Act before it was under the jurisdiction till they downsized this, uh, this act. Um, the result is going, uh, the result it has drastically reduced federal protection for waterways that are critical for us, our wildlife. So our wetlands are no longer protected in Florida. Next slide, please. And here we've just spoke about the wetlands is under attack. And I just told you about uh, Sackett versus the EPA. Next slide, please. And so we also, I also spoke about, will this amendment lead uh, to uh, pref a lot of lawsuits? Well, if these agencies do not comply and the harm is still being done, uh, due to pollution, we the lawsuits are about stopping and making those agencies comply. It has nothing to do with money. And hopefully, if we do win the lawsuit, that the state will have to pay our legal fees. But we're prepared. Should we sh should we lose? Next slide, please. Um. Well, we just, uh, it, well, it just answered the question. No, it will not lawsuit. It will not make a lot of lawsuits because we know this hasn't happened. Because we, um, we know this, uh, this because that hasn't happened in other states with similar amendments. Next slide, please. Oh, won't it be a field day for lawyers? I think I've pretty much gone over that question. And only for environmental lawyers will find out how good they are. Um, and then, so no, it won't be a field day for lawyers. Um, next slide, please. Well, because again, the lawsuits aren't about the damages. They're about remedies in restora restoration of our water. Not about money. Next slide, please. Will the legislature undermine the amendment? Luckily, because of past amendments and how the legislature likes to change them to, to please them, not the people, um, the amendment has been written in what's called indefeasible, which means that should it get passed, they cannot change anything in the petition or the amendment. Next slide, please. So um, there, there's our answer. Florida uh, environmental lawyers have helped revise the amendment to further protect us against that by writing it indefeasibly. Next slide. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And they say, don't we already have enough laws? Well, no, we don't. Because look what they did to um, what the Supreme Court did to one of the laws that protected our wetlands. And what about urban sprawl? This is another nightmare because who's going to protect us against the developers that love to develop in places they shouldn't be developing? And then the people that buy those homes 
complain because they have a bear in their swimming pool. Imagine or a gator in their yard. Well, uh, common sense would tell you when you build on the edge of a forest or wetlands, uh, you can't eliminate all the wildlife. And that is on the developer. Um, they have their habitat and this is their habitat. We're encroaching on their habitat. Next slide, please. And um, so if we did have the laws, we wouldn't be out here in the heat collecting conditions at every chance and talking about it at every meeting. So no, we don't have the laws to protect us. Next slide. So as we spoke before, we all need those 900,000 signed petitions. And luckily we do have um, the DEC on board with us. And so they are, as they're campaigning, carrying our petitions with them or when they're tabling events, just, and thank you, League of Women Voters. You're also a supporting organization with us. You're also asking people to sign our petitions. And it, it, as they say, what was it, 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 it takes a tribe, it takes a county to do it. We need everybody on board. And that's why I was asking if the, the Medicaid people, well, we're offering your petitions. I hope you'll be offering ours as well. And we, if we collaborate, we'll both win. Next slide, please. Here yes, 2026. And thank you all. I hope I've been able to, I'm a terrible public speaker, but I hope we've been able to answer your question. And Victoria, I'm just going to jump in here and underscore a couple of things that you said, because one of the, one of the things that you said, you know, we, um, first of all, the, we have 110,000 folks who signed the petition previously. So we're starting from that as, as Victoria is mentioning, you know, clean water is something that affects every day everyday lives and people, the, the support for it, I think as over 80% of Floridians now recognize climate change, there's the manatee. Um, we are also seeing, people are dra dramatically seeing the impacts of our polluted water. Um, the reason we specifically need this amendment, as Victoria mentioned, because it's a hierarch hierarchy in the law, in 2020, Orange County residents actually 89% voted to have a to pass uh, the Fed to invoke the federal clean water bill to protect their um, their water. But what happened is the Florida legislature in 2020 quickly passed a preemption law to prevent that uh, their local amendment from taking place. They wanted, as I said, it was over 89% of uh, folks in uh, Orange County voted for that. So the state has preempted in 2020, any local authority from taking action to clean its, to keep its water clean, uh, to prevent pollution and, and so on and so forth. In fact, line 2371 prohibits specifically local governments from giving quote, any legal rights or granting any citizens any specific rights relating to the natural environment. And this includes, of course, the clean water. We, as we all know, Governor DeSantis has had this blue green algae task force, but after four years, this blue green algae task force has literally done nothing because you know, for four years, only 13% of the recommendations have been enacted. And what we're seeing as we live and breathe every day, we're seeing this terrible proliferation of blue green algae, red tides and so on, which carry neuro, a lot of uh, diseases with them. Um, in, you know, the, the um, Florida Corps of Engineers previously said that they could not take human health concerns into consideration as they are considering uh, releasing the water that, that uh, Victoria was showing us in those slides, the, that they could not take human health concerns into uh, 
account as they make their decisions for releasing waters the, from the polluted waters of Lake Okeechobee. And we know that there are 23 rivers around there that are all heavily polluted because there's no enforcement. So what this does is, as Victoria said, it's not a matter of lawyers gaining a lot of money. It's a matter of enforcing the laws that are already in effect. So I'll just say, reiterate a couple of the advantages of an amendment over you know, legislation or over other steps. It means that this is a fundamental right, which um, allows for uh, citizens to bring rights uh, on behalf of nature. Um, and this means that they can sue for either action or inaction by, by Florida for not uh, enforcing these laws. Um, it, it, it enables an equitable remedy rather than just a legal remedy. Declaring they have rights, it, it, it authorizes an equitable remedy, which means that they can sue for inaction by the state when they are, and it gives them cause. The problem has been when the state is giving permits to polluters to pollute, they, are not taking into consideration our human health. So this is this means that if the state is going to allow a polluter to pollute under this amendment, they must any rights or permits they are given would be given strict scrutiny, which means they must show with a compelling reason why that pollution or those steps must occur, and it must be undertaken as narrowly as possible. So it creates a compelling uh, interest to protect our our clean water. Um, as we say, it, as Victoria said, it gives legal standing to citizens to take agencies to court to stop the harm. And it means that <clears throat> this it's a self-enforcing amendment. As Victoria mentioned, you know, as we've seen with amendment uh, restoration of rights of uh, former felons to vote, well, the legislature enacted, quote, enabling legislation, which completely undermined the impact of that amendment. So as, as Victoria mentioned, this amendment has been written specifically so it is self-enacting so that the legislature can undermine the impact of it. And that's really a key factor. So as, as she said, we need our million signatures. We're gonna start out with our 110 uh, folks who already signed the petition and do a mailer to them because as the question was asked with Medicaid, everyone must sign a new petition. If you signed a petition before March of this year, it's not the new petition, but we're going to start with a mailer. It costs a dollar to send a mailer to all of the 110,000 people who signed the previous petition. So that's $110,000 we need to start with to get those mailers to them, which is our basis. Um, but we also need to get to the number of 223,000 petitions signed. So that triggers the ability of the state court, Supreme Court, to review that amendment language so that we can qualify to get on the petition for 2026. Um, I know the question was asked earlier about we're start, why we're starting early, and it's clear to our advantage, as, as Victoria suggested, to um, start in the middle of a campaign because when we're out there canvassing for re-registering uh, re voters to vote by mail and on behalf of candidates, it's a talking point for them to open the door. People want clean water. It's a nonpartisan issue. And it's a big, important issue that elevates a lot of the candidates, helps them, helps us get people re-registered to vote by mail. And it's it's really a very positive complement to campaign efforts um, because it touches people's lives so, so very directly. So we're getting started now because we have to. Um, we have to get through the process and the time frame and get that Supreme Court uh, scrutiny passed on the language so that we can qualify for the 2026 20, ballot. So it's not as if we, we you know, we have time to uh, to waste. So that's just a couple of um, additions to to the presentation um, that uh, that Victoria made, and and we got to get organized and get going. Um, 
a couple of the other organizations that in addition to League of Women Voters, you know, the Rotary Club uh, around the world supports clean water and well, clean well water. And so we've made overtures to the Rotary Clubs throughout Florida to when they're going out with their beach, clean beach drives to send people the petitions, all the Rotary members so that they can go out and collect petitions as well. So between the, the, um, the League of Women Voters, the Rotary Clubs and the Sierra Club, of course, we have a lot of parallel interests and organizations that will be of a powerful allies in uh, getting the number, the million petitions we know we're gonna need. I'll stop there too, Victoria, and see if we have any questions. Tiffany, <laughs> want to say something? Great. Those I would love great. to, I, everybody, thank you so much. You guys did great. Um, it is so important, just like Jake said, we need money. We need millions of dollars. We tried to do it last time without the money. It didn't work. We did the most phenomenal job, according to the professionals. We got 120,000 signatures with $25,000. You don't, that doesn't happen. So if we can get the money, you know, I, it, for, to do the tally ad, it takes seven million dollars. That's the simplest way. You send everybody a petition uh, that signed a petition. You send them uh, a new petition, and you ask them to send it to seven or eight people, more people. But that's that's seven million dollars right there. So, please ask your friends to donate. Will you please donate? This is like, I, I feel like I'm running for office because we are. We need clean water. <laughs> please. I'll say it one more time and that's all. $5. If everybody in the state gave $5, it'd be done. Well, Linda, thank you thank all. That was Linda, great. Um, anecdotes. They were, uh, the anecdotes were great to Victoria's presentation. She did a wonderful job. Tiffany, your passion is well-received. Uh, we need to get the petition. Do we have the petition that we could send out to the group? Is there is that available? Because they downloaded the uh, the healthcare group. Just download. I was able to download it. Do it right, like a spot. So if you could send it out, and everybody, you can you can download it at floridarighttocleanwater.org. Um, and yeah. and anybody anybody in this group that would like for me to personally send you because I'm doing this. Between 2,500 and 5,000 petitions. I don't know who's gotten them yet. Uh, that's kind of what I'm doing. Please let me know. Uh, we're sending them out to everybody in huge, mm. huge. It's not even that big a box, truthfully. But it's Victoria's gotten, I think, God, well, I don't even know, 10,000 already. But um, we, we'd love to send them to you so you have them. Linda, Just, if you could us the link just send us the link we could all download it at, at our leisure and send it out oh i, I want to send you about ten thousand. all right <laughs> i hear you girl send me send me your address you're, you're saying all the right things we we all agree and you you know what i think it's smart that you're you're ahead of the game on this and it makes <laughs> sense 100 percent. so let's let's get it going and Ali, the, the link, uh, Tiffany put the link in the chat. It's Florida Right to Clean Water, all one word, Florida mm -hmm. Right to Clean Water dot org. Tiffany put it in the chat so you can go right there and get the petition and down, you know, download. It's it's really yeah. easy. So I mean, yeah. I'm doing the right. there's so one button there's one button that says this is the get your petition and then right under it is another button that says donate. I, it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> when you think that eighty percent <laughs> of our water, our springs are all polluted. Eighty percent of Florida's one thousand springs are 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 polluted. And we've you know we've got yeah. So just wanted to let you know, I always give Monica a bunch of petitions when I do tabling with her. Um, if you, if the league needs petitions, please don't print them. I have a box of 5,000 sitting over here. I'll be glad okay. to deliver them to whoever. 
just ask me. <laughs> and if it doesn't rain, Victoria, we're, we always see the league at the Starlight Concerts Friday nights. <laughs> we got, but we got rain out Friday, and I guess I don't know what looks like it this Friday. But we're also going to be at the Juneteenth. There are a couple of Juneteenth events Saturday, mm -hmm. so we'll be there, pending the floods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think Allie is frozen. She lost. Oh, there maybe she's not. She yeah. lost. Um, it's, this is like a nightmare. If you, can, oh, I, yeah. Monica, I sent a note. If you, I have two modems because I, I need the connectivity. It's like not even worth it. So it, this has not been a good night for connectivity. But anyway, I'm doing the best I can. Um, uh, are we are we good? Thank you to everybody. I, those were great presentations, all good information. Thank you. Very important we'll information to get out there. Thank yes. you. Hey, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Victoria. Eyes to the manatee. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.